good to have you here on our Saturday 10A stream, which is a, a panel discussion about education issues brought to you by at Every Kids Count OK. Every Kid Counts OK is uh, on Twitter, and you go there at Every Kids Count OK. Our topic this week is aviation, the importance of aviation education in Oklahoma. And I'm happy to be joined by the co-host, my friend, the director of digital communications at Griffin Communications, Ryan Welton. Mr. Welton, good Saturday morning to you. Good Saturday morning to you. Watched a lot of basketball last night. Unfortunately, the Bruins, as you see in the background, that they did not survive the Sweet 16. Yeah, they got in against them Blue Bloods, didn't they? That's what no, happened. No doubt about it. No doubt. But actually, it. there's no more Blue Blood than UCLA. I mean, yeah, well, actually... right. No, 100%. Well, of course, you still have North Carolina, Duke, and Kansas. Oh, that's true. A lot of Big 12. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're here. And uh, we've got a great panel. And I'm kind of excited. Well, I'm more than kind of excited because I'm an uh, aviation buff. And watch out here and way out in eastern Oklahoma County, you see a little activity out of a Air Force base not too far from here. And we spot these planes, some of them exotic from time to time. And, you know, Oklahoma has really has shifted in the last 10 years or so, well, even before that. In terms of businesses located at Tinker, uh, aeronautics, aviation, it is a big business in our state. It's growing. And uh, we're going to talk about the importance of that to education. You were talking about, you're a Henrietta kid. And that's that right. correct. Yeah. And when you were talking about career techs back then, what was, there were great ones, but still pretty limited, well, right? Uh, Henrietta had a carpentry, carpentry program. I was not part of it, but the carpentry class at Henrietta, they built a house. That was their project every year, a, a house that an actual family lived in. It was pretty amazing to see. And I just, I think that uh, aviation and aerospace programs in Oklahoma, this is like a level up. This is next level Jetsons world type stuff, which is very exciting. It really is. And so, well, let's get right to our guest. We've got uh, two separate uh, sessions this morning and we've got a great uh, first panel, a great second panel. Let's go ahead and bring them in. I'm going to bring uh, in, let's start with the student, uh, John David Muse from down around Ada, Oklahoma. John, good to have you. Yes, I'm great. Uh, excited to be here. I'm very excited. And speaking of uh, athletics, uh, what was the score last night? You're, uh, Ada's in baseball now, right? Yes, uh, we played Christian Heritage last night. We got a 7-1 to victory. Um, so we're keep rolling. We're 11-1 and right now to start the season. So hey, that's a pretty good start. That's No matter who you are, that's a good start for Dodgers, you know. So. <laughs> Also from our uh, our team this morning is uh, Mike Anderson, who's the superintendent down at uh, Greater Ada, as, as we said at Lindsay, because we never, ever beat Ada. That's how that works. Uh, <laughs> superintendent, good to have you. Thanks, Scott. It's great to be here. Hello, Ryan and JD. Congratulations on your win last night. I happened to be able to stick around and watch that. So I'm very proud of you guys and anxious to see how this conversation goes today. Yes, sir. It's going to be fun. So, hey, JD, I guess we know now that you're called JD. When you got the superintendent on, you're always really extra careful. So, yeah. yes, sir. All right. And also for our first panel this morning, let's bring in Grayson R.D., who's the director of the state, uh, the state director of uh, our state aeronautics commission. Uh, Grayson, it's good to have you, sir. Yeah. Good morning. Glad we can uh, kick off this beautiful weekend with what my what is my favorite subject, aviation aerospace. All right, so we know how Ada did. We know Rick Nagel's going to be in a little bit. He's talking soccer. And then the superintendent uh, from Norman, he's watching soccer this morning. So anything sports-wise catching your eye right now, Mr. Ardies? Uh I'm just uh, waiting for that uh, special time that's coming up in a couple of weeks called the Masters. Oh, yeah. oh that's so, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm, I'm waiting to hear that music. Been seeing some of those commercials on uh, CBS. And, oh, man, that music plays tunes to my heart. Well, it's going to be fun. Hope it's nice weather. So we'll see how that works out. All right. So we're talking about the importance of uh, aeronautics education in Oklahoma. Ryan, take it away. Well, I wanted to ask Superintendent Anderson. Uh, Ada is a pioneer in aerospace and aviation education. And what uh, what prompted you to want to get into the You Can Fly program? And what challenges have you faced in the now six years, I believe, that you've been in it? Well, we had, um, I had conversations with our city manager just to kick things off, Cody Holcomb, about offering STEM opportunities, internships, and partnerships between Ada schools and the city of Ada. Um, and he happens to be a pilot and an aviation enthusiast. And so those conversations eventually uh, moved over to that topic. And 
Uh, one day he, along with uh, two other local enthusiasts, uh, Bill Bailey and Don Childers, got together and came to see myself and Paula Keedy, who now works uh, for Grayson with the uh, Aeronautics Commission. Paula at that time was our director of construction. And they came into our office and said, hey, we would love to be able to bring some aviation awareness activities to your students. Something as simple as bringing remote controlled aircraft or model airplanes into your elementary schools and um, showing the young kids what the parts are, how they work, uh, the basics of flight. And I said, well, listen, uh, I'm all in. We can make that happen tomorrow. Uh, so that was exciting for me. I'm kind of like Scott. I'm an aviation enthusiast. I'm not a pilot. I wish I was because I'll, I'll get in any plane with anybody and fly anywhere at any time. I just love to fly. Uh, so this, this excited me right off the bat. From there, we took that conversation and, and I said, let's meet again here in about three weeks. And from there, we brought in more local partnerships, more local enthusiasts, more district employees. And I, I, I never will forget the day that we sat down to meet and about halfway through that conversation, we began to see what kind of opportunities were available in the world of aviation for our students. And it's limitless. Aviation touches everything and happens to be the second largest industry in our state. So when those realizations uh, became known to me, I literally stopped that meeting right in its tracks. I said, listen, guys, I'm looking around this room. We've got the right people in this room to make this happen. So now let's go do it. I'm in. I don't know how we're going to fund it, but we'll figure it out. And that's just kind of how we got started. But why we got started was the fact that it was going to provide opportunities uh, for our students that uh, are limitless and unique and something that hadn't been done. Uh, so people have asked me what the challenges were. I think the biggest challenge that we saw was that we were the first to uh, enter into this program. So we were field testing the AOPA's curriculum. So we kind of felt like it's been said that we were trying to fly a plane while we were building it. And that's kind of how it felt because we were going back and forth with the AOPA at Purdue University. We were making tweaks to the curriculum. We were telling them what we thought was good, what we might want to change. And so that was really the only challenge. Other than that, to me, this has been a journey. It's been an adventure and it's been fun and exciting. And when you're going down that path, to me, there really are no challenges. We're, we're just going to blaze a trail and, and keep moving forward. I would say, you know, I, I mentioned the fact that uh, we felt like we were trying to build a plane. To me, that may be the next step for us. We're putting kids in airplanes. They're soloing planes, JD solos right now. He, he got in a plane one day and uh, the flight instructor said, I'm not going with you. Now, that, to me, that's impressive. Uh, so not only do uh, did I feel like we were trying to build a plane, now I want to go build one. And we're going to try to find a way to get into that aspect of aviation in the in the A&P uh, part of things and fabrication and manufacturing. So, um, but challenges, yeah, there's a few, but really for us, it's been an adventure and a journey and, and very exciting. JD, before I ask you about some specifics of that adventure, I wanted to ask Grayson about what are some of the broader opportunities? You know, I've been aware, especially from the Tulsa side of the state, just how big an aerospace aviation city that is. But what are some of the career paths that students can take in this world? Well, and I think that's the uh, the exciting part of aviation aerospace is whatever a, a kid or student or even an adult, they're looking to change careers, can dream up of what they want to do. They want to be a mechanic. They want to be an accountant. They want to be an engineer, a uh, project manager, marketing specialist, uh, news, news opportunities. Mm -hmm. You can do it in aviation aerospace. And the great thing that I always try and tell people is there are careers that require four year degrees, but there are plenty more careers in aviation aerospace in the state that don't require four year degrees. You can go to our career tech program, do a six month, 12 month, 18 month certification and walk into any one of those companies up in Tulsa or that, uh, Tinker Air Force Base installation that uh, Mike was talking about earlier and get a really, really good paying job. And that, that at the end of the day, it's, it's really pretty much wide open what your career can be in aviation aerospace right here in Oklahoma. That sounds fantastic, but you have to have that spark of interest in JD. What did, was it just something that you, you said, you know, I want to try this program or have you had a lifelong interest in aviation and flying? Maybe your folks or grandpa or somebody took you flying. What, what sparked that? 
Well, it kind of sparked um, back when I was a little kid. We were living up in Oklahoma City, and we would fly down to Florida for Christmas every year um, to go see my grandparents. And I enjoyed flying on the planes and stuff. Uh, but then it, my interest really peaked uh, freshman year when I got into the aviation program. And we learned about the history of aviation. And my eyes were really opened up because I kept talking about the pilot shortage um, and how many career opportunities there really are in aviation. Um, and it allowed me uh, to see that this could be a career that I can uh, make it lifelong out of. So, what have, what have been some of the challenges in terms of the curriculum for you? Uh, you is it math? Is it mechanics? Is there has there been anything that has uh, felt a little tough for you so far? Uh, yeah, with the curriculum, uh, some of the stuff that's harder is uh, the private pilot written test, getting ready for that, getting prepared, um, and some of it becomes meticulous when you're going through it. And a little bit repetitive but then uh it kind of balances out whenever you get to get on the flight simulators and test it out and then really get up in the plane um is the is the great right. part down the road are you thinking private pilot commercial pilot military what what is what do you envision as of right now your career path being um so i am currently i've been accepted into the aviation program down at southeastern for their professional pilot program uh so i'm planning on going down there uh, next fall and going to be probably looking at doing an airline pilot job. Um, so first I'll get my private pilot. I hope to finish that up this summer and go down to Southeastern with my private pilot, but then um, continuing further, getting my instrument rating and then commercial pilot. And then finally my air transport pilot certificate. That's right off, right off the bat. You're coming out of high school with serious, serious, um, background and a way to make a living and something that's fun. And, and if I could just ask Mr. Artie's of the state aeronautics commission, I mean, is this something you folks are working with like superintendent Anderson helping high schools, schools, or maybe career tech set these programs up? It looks like the future. So th this is really, this AOPA program has been a, a godsend for everybody in, a, in aviation aerospace. Uh, you'll hear from probably Rick Nagel later in the segment, that, you know, since the early 2000s, we've been looking for a ready to go curriculum in a can that can be given out to Mike Anderson and other superintendents across the state. Uh, and when he started on this journey about six years ago uh, with Paul Akiti, who uh, now works for us and is kind of our education guru at the commission. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we went from one school field testing this six years ago to this year. Right now, Oklahoma's ranked number three in the country with 28 schools teaching it. And uh, the, the, the opportunity to apply for the curriculum for next school year is still open. And we're right now knocking on the door of 50 schools that will be teaching this starting next school year. So um, this is an amazing opportunity. It prepares kids. It gets them excited. I wish I had it back uh, in, in school. I, I was I have my parents. They went and sent me to every aviation space summer camp. I crashed rockets. I crashed RC model airplanes. Um, I, you know, did everything when it came to aviation aerospace for after school and summer programs, but I didn't have a, a high school program that I could go walk into. And I so wish that I could. So I'm glad to see that superintendents like Mike Anderson and others across the state have really kind of jumped in and cannonballed uh, with this particular curriculum, because I think this is the wave of the future. And, and what you're going to see and probably here in, in the next segment from Norman, that that's taking it even further and beyond uh what what we're currently doing so it's it's exciting we're glad to see the energy around this because the biggest challenge we have in aviation aerospace is workforce um you, you don't you, when, when we grew up in oklahoma we heard about oil and gas we heard about ag um we obviously all know medical is a field that we can go into but you don't really hear about aviation aerospace and we're trying to change that we're trying to change that calculus here in the state to make more parents aware of what this uh, career field can mean and, and obviously make our students uh, and other young people aware of what this career field can mean for them and also what it can mean to the state. Superintendent Anderson, I wanted to ask you about that this curriculum. What are some of the aspects of the aviation curriculum, the You Can Fly curriculum, that could actually help students in other parts of STEM education? Well, I and mean, JD may be able to answer that better than me, but I, I, our instructor is uh, an advanced math instructor that's where we uh, we moved him out of our advanced math coursework uh, and put him in aviation so there's a, a good bit of math obviously science uh, there's some mechanics some hydraulics uh, hands-on learning there in, in those aspects but uh, 
it crosses all of STEM, obviously, uh, science, and the technology, the engineering side of things, and math. Uh, but it does it does take them down a path uh, that leads to uh, uh, their ground school and getting that done so that they can move in. And for us, because we're going down the pilot pathway. Now, if we were going down another pathway, there might be some different curriculum that would uh, be more applicable to some of the other STEM activities but for us it takes us straight to that pilot pathway jd is a perfect example of what this what our pathway and what our program is designed to do when i talked to the board about this six years ago whenever it was i told them that i had a vision that we would have kids with their pilot's license before they left high school that vision and that dream is now a reality and what jd has been able to do to go to be able to go to southeastern with that already under his belt puts him a, uh, you know ahead of the class when he gets there We've got two other young men at Southeastern. Uh, Tanner Gillum is uh, sitting for his uh, commercial pilot uh, test right now. Uh, Tariq Lyons is a, is a new uh, student at Southeastern that came from Ada that's also involved there. Uh, we have a student that, that graduated out of our program at the University of Oklahoma that's uh, an engineering major, aeronautical engineering at the top of his class. And we have a young man that is uh, in his second year at the Air Force Academy. And so we have we are putting graduates out. We're putting alums from this program in places uh, where they can move forward in their careers and, and they start ahead of the game when they get there. And it's because of the, the classwork and the curriculum and uh, the hard work that our instructors uh, and, and our local partners. I'm going to tell you this. You can talk about simulators and um, all the all the necessary resources that you have, but the most important resource you have are your people, and it always will be that way. It's always going to come back to people, and at Ada, we've been so very fortunate not only to have the right people in place in our district, but our community has never said no. When we went to them with this idea, and when they came to us with this idea, it became a partnership right away, and, and like I said, they never say no. We've started the foundation in Ada, called ASAP, Ada Schools Aviation Program Foundation, where we go out, our community goes out, and John David's been a benefit a benefactor of this. They go raise money for these students to take flight lessons, and they pay for it. And so uh, that foundation has raised a lot of money for our kids. Our kids do not have to pay for these uh, lessons out of their own pocket. So the partnerships, the people, uh, people always drive initiatives like this and and this is a perfect example of what I'm what I'm talking about. Uh Director Artie's are if schools want to do this and they see what Mr. Anderson's doing, what Mr. Muse is doing and how he's he's really exemplary and and capitalizing on this, how can schools learn more about this? And also how can businesses learn? I mean there's got to be when we see what's happening at our at, down around Tinker we see a burgeoning aerospace defense industry. A lot of it has to do with aviation. So certainly there's ways for businesses to partner in this, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that's probably the, uh, the neatest thing about this whole AOPA program is the interaction between school districts, the, the local airport, uh, aviation aerospace businesses, and even the non-aviation aerospace businesses. I mean, the, the banking community in a lot of these small towns has come together to provide monetary support to go after uh, this particular effort. But but the great thing is with AOPA, it's free. Uh, it's free for a school to sign up. It's free to teach. Uh, the supplies to teach the class are pretty minimal. Uh, and, and we at the Aeronautics Commission have a grant program. Um, we've been slowly increasing that every year. This past year, we granted out 50 different applicants uh, for a total award north of $350,000. So would highly encourage schools to, to come look at the Aeronautics Commission's program uh, for application. There are other uh, educational grant opportunities. And, and really, at the end of the day, uh, if you were to go to your local community, visit your aviation company uh, in town or even maybe in the next town over and ask them for help, they, they may not provide you monetary, but they are going to provide you some in-kind. They're going to provide you aviation people that will come talk to your classroom. They'll be able to come teach. Uh, just as an example, uh, McAllister the uh, the teacher for the first two years of the McAllister AOPA program is the airport manager. That's been a great partnership between that city and the airport and that school district there in McAllister. And that same thing repeats itself across the state. Uh, people volunteering their time to come talk to uh, students in the classroom, talk to them about careers. 
And so, yeah, the, the business opportunity to, to collaborate, to partner with uh, schools, that's really how we're trying to get the word out. Uh, I go around the speaking circuit pretty frequently uh, telling about this AOPA program. Uh, our education uh, program manager, Paula Keedy, who you heard me talk about earlier, she's been traveling across the state. She's probably in about four or five different towns a week uh, talking to superintendents, talking to aviation aerospace businesses about this particular program. Uh, but at the end of the day, we at the Aeronautics Commission, we're a small group and we need those business entities to step up, tell people about this program, tell schools, get involved uh, and, and try. And we're hoping, yeah, we're going to hit 50 next year. Maybe we can hit 100 in a couple of years and who knows where it's going to go from there. J.D., so the spark hit you clearly and, and you got into this program. But what would you say to students a little bit younger than you who uh, uh, maybe are considering this, but are a little tentatively, uh, maybe academically or otherwise, what advice would you give future students of the You Can Fly program? Well, I mean, I'd say just kind of get into it and see if you like it. I mean, there's a lot of students um, at the junior highs where our program starts in ninth grade. Our uh, freshmen are still at the junior high. Um, and they can kind of see, the seventh and eighth graders can see the ninth graders, um, how they're going along in the program. And that's really what sparked me is I was still too young to be in the aviation program, but I was seeing what the ninth graders and the high schoolers were doing, and they were flying uh, model airplanes, remote control model airplanes, and shooting rockets off um, out in the field and while I was sitting in class and I was looking out the window, and I was seeing that there were model rockets being shot out on the football field while I was sitting in class. Um, so it's kind of just get into it and see where you fit in. I mean, it doesn't have to be a pilot. We have I have students in my class that want to be engineers um, on airplanes, and a student that wants to fly drones. Um, so it's really there's so many different aspects in the aviation um, field that the AOPA curriculum can really take you along and get you there. All right, Director Artie's question that just sparked an idea in my mind. You know, in the news business, we do use drones from time to time. Are there continuing education opportunities within the, the aeronautics world in the state of Oklahoma for people who have already long passed high school? A absolutely. Uh, we see all kinds of people that are leaving their current careers uh, to go into the aviation aerospace field. Either one, it's it's exciting. I mean, let's let's face it. We have two great things. You, you, met, you mentioned one, Ryan, that's drones, UAS, uh, urban air mobility or advanced air mobility, you know, people being able to hop in a, a autonomously piloted aircraft and go from point A to point B, that, that's on the horizon. And then obviously the, the commercialization of space and what we're seeing with Elon Musk uh, and Blue Origin and others uh, across the country, that's really energized uh, people to want to get into aviation aerospace, kind of like it was back in the Cold War when you had the space race uh, and obviously wanting to, uh, to fight the Soviet Union. Uh, we today have that same principle with UAS and drones and commercialization of space transportation. So um, people, whether they're young students or whether they've been in their own career field for 20 or 30 years, can come find themselves a place in aviation aerospace. So whether they want to go to a career tech system and get retrained, uh, whether they want to go to one of our university systems and, and get a, another degree, or just go out and apply for an avi aviation aerospace job at the end of the day, and their experience might translate to the aviation aerospace field. That's one of the things that we see, for example, we know oil and gas in Oklahoma, it's got that boom and bust cycle. Uh, I've had several friends that I graduated from University of Oklahoma with that were petroleum engineers or mechanical engineers working the oil and gas field. And they, after a couple of boom and bust cycles, they quit and they moved over and became aerospace engineers. And, and they joined the aerospace field because it was a little bit more uh, of, a, of a stable job. And so glad to see that. We see that happen all across the state. And that's just going to continue to energize this industry. And, and we hope at some point, to be able to move into that number one slot and become the state's top industry in Oklahoma. Hey, one final question for everybody across the board here. Uh, STEAM and STEM are acronyms that everybody needs these days. And so when you're looking at, especially Mr. Anderson and Mr. Ardes, this curriculum looks to me like it's much, it's broader than just that. It gets into a lot of skills. It goes across the STEM and, and, uh, steam platforms am i right about that well you're ex that's a great point scott uh, because what this program did for us is make us think a little bit outside the box uh, we tried to build our aviation program 
literally from the ground up. And by that, I mean, JD hit on something that he was too young to be a part of the program when he started to get interested in it. We build our program and our awareness activities all the way down to our pre-K center. So we actually have A is for airplane at the pre-K center for four-year-olds. And our instructor at, at Ada High School, John, John David's instructor, Mr. Eckler, has earned his pilot certification. So he'll do a flyover with the principal in the airplane on the day that we do A is for airplane for our pre-K kids. And that grows all the way through our system to the point where JD is, where we're doing capstone projects and soloing airplanes. Uh, but it also caused us to think about the arts as well. And as a result, you're right, STEM kind of becomes STEAM. And we right now have one of the most outstanding performing arts and visual arts and musical uh, uh, organizations in the state of Oklahoma. I'm just as proud of them as I am our aviation. But aviation laid the groundwork for us and, and the AOPA curriculum and the help that we got from Director Artes and others uh, to push us down this path has been good for us even outside of the world of aviation. So you hit on a good point. It, it's, uh, uh, we're, we're seeing benefits all across the curriculum, all across our school system. I think I would echo that, what uh, Mike had to say, you know, STEM STEM curriculum and, and STEM careers, uh, we must do everything we can in the state of Oklahoma to ensure our students, we're not just educating for the sake of educating, that we're educating our kids to a successful and solid career field, one that allows them to stay in Oklahoma. And that's, that's I think, the thing that excites me most about aviation aerospace, is this is a career field that someone could stay, you know, grow up in Oklahoma, go to school, get educated, find a job, and stay right here for their entire career uh, and, and have a really good life. The, the one number I'd leave you with is when we did our economic impact study that showed this was our state's second largest industry, the average annual salary at that time was $73,300 a year. That was almost double what the average Oklahoma made. These are good, high paying jobs. And again, they don't all require college careers. So amazing opportunities are, are ahead. And Ryan, I, I just I'd like to leave you with this that uh, you saw in the carpentry program that yes, you those folks built a house. We actually have several of our AOPA schools. I think maybe Mike alluded to trying to teach this here in the upcoming couple of years. We now have the last year of the AOPA program, people are building airplanes, uh, building RV home built airplanes and are either flying them or selling them and being able to buy more airplanes to build in the future. So we, we have come full circle and, and man, I, I, I wish I could do that. I wish I could go back and be a high schooler again. Well, it's an exciting time, and uh, we want to thank the Superintendent Mike Anderson, the Director of the Aeronautics Commission, Grayson Ardes, and John David Muse, who last night was playing baseball and today is a student again. By the way, J.D., if you were going to, what do you see flying out there that you'd like to be behind the controls? If you could just pick one out. Oh, wow. Um, I think probably like a big boy, like a 787, get up behind the controls of that fly fly anywhere I want in that thing. Well, um, what a, a set, the Dreamliner is interesting airplane just to see with that weak swept and those scalloped engines on the side. Those are, yes. uh, it's quite an engine and quite a, quite a machine. John David, Superintendent Anderson, Director Artis, thanks for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you guys soon. And, uh, man, that was an interesting panel and we've got a great one coming up next. We're going, to, we're going to be going down a little closer to the University of Oklahoma, and let's bring this guy in. We're going to get soccer updates. Uh, good morning, Mr. Nagel. How are you? Hey, Rick Scott. Nagel. Good morning. Hey. And I hit on uh, Dr. Nick's name right off the bat. Was it 100% Dr. Bill Urino? 100%. You did it two for two, so that's a, a first twice now. So this is exciting. Uh, so I've known Rick Nagel for a really long time, and he is uh, one of the best people in Oklahoma and one of the best people Oklahoma has ever produced. The CEO of Acorn Growth Company is a regent at the University of Oklahoma. As I always say, my first journalism class at the University of Oklahoma, uh, the late, great um, Dr. Joe Holland, who on the first day of school, Rick, said, we are the University of Oklahoma. Oklahoma University is at Stillwater. So any paper that you turned in where you called it Oklahoma University was was sent back immediately. So it's good to see. And by the way, how did we do in soccer this morning up in KC? Uh, we got the uh, we got the morning victory, uh, 37 degrees. I, I still think soccer should not be played 
under 50 degrees, but, uh, uh, the kids are fine. Parents are freezing, but it was, it was a you know, good start to the tournament. Outstanding. I'm glad to have you. Thanks for being with us this morning. And Dr. I'm Nick is the superintendent of Norman public schools. Good to have you. And you heard our first conversation and, and Rick, you're about to start a program. Dr. Nick, you're starting a program down there and Yes, we're talking about education this morning, and and Rick, if I could start with you, why is this so important to you that you would put your money where your mouth is? And Dr. Nick, why is this so important for the future of education in Oklahoma? Absolutely. Well, I mean, to begin with, uh, Oklahoma right now ranks 49th in the country in STEM outcomes coming out of high school. We're just not appealing to kids uh, to get excited about, you know, the, the kind of courses and the kind of careers that follow. And if you compare that to the aerospace and defense sector in our state, which is, you know, in desperate need of engineers and technical uh, skill sets coming out of high school, our, our career tech and, and college, um, it's just a big mismatch. It's our fastest growing sector in our economy. Uh, as you heard earlier from Grayson, they're not only, you know, good jobs, but they're great jobs. They're usually two times the state per capita income, and we've just got a, a supply and demand problem. So part of this for me is thematically at Acorn Growth Companies, we invest in aerospace and defense. We acquired a business in Seattle called Raysbeck Engineering. If you're flown on a King Air, you probably got our parts on there. Uh, the founder of that firm, James Raysbeck, started really one of the first you know, comprehensive STEM schools that was um, – uh, immersed in aviation, which was the Race Tech Aviation High School up there. So we became familiar with that model. I've had it kind of on the list forever to think about bringing that here to Oklahoma as well. And it's the, the stars aligned to do it right now. So Rick, let me ask you, why is it important for businesses like your organization to partner with high schools in the aviation and aerospace industry? Well, first of all, it's about making all of these uh these technical courses relevant. Okay, so if you think about um, back to when you were in, in, in uh, high school and you're sitting there in trigonometry, you're sitting there in calculus, you know, the common refrain from everybody sitting in that class around you is, oh, I'm never going to use this stuff. So why should I care about it? Uh, when, you're in, when you're in chemistry class, when you're in physics, what these hands-on high schools are designed to do, and what we're going to do here in Norman, is bring to life why all that stuff matters. It's not just, uh, you know, putting it on a whiteboard and, and going through, you know, the, the, you know, the math, it's actually applying it to, so kids understand and get hands on with all of this stuff. So it becomes super interesting for them. And if, as industry partners, they have to help shape that curriculum so that when kids come out, they're immediately ready for the careers that are around, that are around them and are, that are here in the state, whether that be Tinker Air Force Base or, you know, becoming, uh, you know, immediately um, fast-tracked into an FAA program, whether to be air traffic control or some other support function, uh, work at any number of the aerospace-related uh, manufacturing firms or the maintenance, repair, and overhaul industries that are here, or working ground support at an airport, um, let, you know, let alone addressing the pilot shortage that we've got and all the other things that, uh, that we, we know about. The idea is to get kids either career-ready, so they come out and they're ready to go by exposing them to a curriculum that will allow them to work on aircraft, build a plane, as we've heard earlier, uh, fly a plane, or become a commercial drone operator. You come out, you know, you're re ready, you know, immediately ready to go. And the nice thing about Norman is that we are, because of the unique university relationship with that airport and the flight program that's already there, um, we can get kids, you know, kind of concurrently enrolled at OU. And the University of Oklahoma has been amazing in this partnership. Of, of making sure that when the kids come out that don't want to go right into the workforce and want to go to college, they're fast tracked either into the engineering program or into the flight program. I think that's interesting, Rick, you, you started talking about this as a region and then your company has been working on aerospace for many, many years. And, and I think about reaching out to these schools. And so my question to Dr. Nick, this Rick brings this idea. He's working with you. Why is aerospace? sort of the one area that you're really highlighting amongst all the STEAM disciplines? Well, you know, first I have to start off just in case my kiddos are watching. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier, my girls are playing volleyball in Indiana, not soccer. I, I am so sorry. And by the way, how's the score? 
it, well, they've won their first two matches, two and O. They went three and O yesterday, so doing great. And and Rick, I just you know, I'll give you a, a suggestion. Indoor sports are great. Although it was snowing in Indiana, they were indoors, so uh, good stuff there. But uh, no, really proud of of my young ladies and and, and the work they're doing. But uh, they're in Indiana. Um, beating some national competition. So good stuff. But why is it so important? Um, you know, first of all, blessed to be in Norman, blessed to be in Norman public schools, you know, uh, seventh largest school district in the state of Oklahoma. We, I mean, we have unique opportunities. Uh, Rick mentioned it. We have the University of Oklahoma. We have more Norman Technology Center. We offer every AP course there is. We, we have more offerings than, than a lot of different school districts. So it's not, why would I just choose this? This is something that we were looking for. What is that excitement? Rick mentioned it. We offer all these courses, but how do you make it applied? How do you take it to that next level? And this was that natural piece. It's engineering, it's arts, it's everything. And we truly believe in pro providing every opportunity we possibly can for kiddos. I, I loved uh, listening to JD. That's the look and the, the spirit I want to hear from our kids when they go through that. How cool is it? You know, had the opportunity to go down and, and visit with Mike and view what they're doing there and uh, great things. But we want to take it to the next level. And Norman, Rick mentioned it. I'll use his word. We have the ecosystem with Max Westheimer, the University of Oklahoma. One thing that just, you know, came up, I've had the opportunity to meet with almost every dean of every college uh, in the university. And just this last week, got to meet with the dean. And we have some meetings scheduled of uh, weather and meteorology. And, the, you know, the College of Aviation has just been moved under that. So, oh, my goodness, he's actually a pilot, too. Um, and uh, just really excited about the opportunity and really those kiddos going through our Oklahoma Aviation Academy, getting front of the line opportunities in, in all of these areas. And we haven't mentioned comp sci, you know, computer science. I mean, that's another huge piece here. So um, so you asked why would I focus on this? It's not a focus. It's an opportunity to just broaden, you know, the the opportunities kiddos can can explore and then hopefully get to their passions quicker. So, Rick, I wanted to ask you about uh, we've talked a lot about the opportunities for the students who go through this program, whether it be in Ada and Norman or any of the other communities across Oklahoma. But what is this sending a message to businesses across the country about doing aviation and aeronautics business in this state? What is that message? And do you feel like it's being heard yet? Well, I hope so. I mean, I hope the message is uh, if you're an aerospace or defense related business, you ought to be here. I mean, um, not only do we have some of the largest consumers of the, the products that those companies sell, whether it be maintenance, repair, and overhaul services, data management, cybersecurity. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, but we also are making an incredible commitment to our future workforce with these kinds of programs and these kinds of partnerships. By getting kids excited about it early, they're much more likely to get careers right that line up with their passions. So we got to spark that when they're young. And whether they come out and they go right into the workforce, whether they go into the, you know, into career tech and, you know, Nick, you mentioned the incredible partnership that you already have, and we're going to be expanding through this program with the Moore Norman Technology Center. And then obviously the University of Oklahoma, who has an incredible uh, flight program as it is, we've got all the stars aligned in Norman to do something that's really very unique. And I hope becomes a model for how this can be done elsewhere across our state. Uh, Rick, if I could follow up on that in terms of you said some model, it could be a model for our state. What kind of role are you envisioning yourself in this program at Norman? Well, I'll, there, you know, we're setting up a separate advisory board. So you'll have the, the um, and Nick can speak to it better than I can, but you'll have the Norman School Board, of course, which manages the entire, you know, platform of all the schools and oversees it. But this program in particular will have its own advisory board of industry professionals who can kind of help, you know, make sure we've got, you know, we're shaping it the right way. We're maintaining the right alignment, the right focus and the right culture. The culture of this is so important. You know, we want kids that are coming into this program that are excited about aviation. You know, think about, you know, pulling in and your, your classes are literally at the airport. Right. So out the window, you're seeing airplanes come and go. Uh, we we want to make sure that we've got a great culture that reinforces, you know, the, the, you know, the science and the technology and the learning and the passion 
that we're trying to develop here that will stay with all of these kids for the rest of their lives. And uh, Dr. Miliorino, hopefully I said that right, three for three. Um, are you seeing that passion? Is it resulting in a higher demand from students? Do you have like, do you have a waiting list? I mean, what sort of demand has this academy sparked for Norman students? Fantastic question. Fantastic question. You know, uh, one thing Rick mentioned is, you know, kiddos getting to see uh, airplanes coming, um, you know, landing and taking off. I failed to mention, you know, part of what we're doing, it's this is not going to be located at one of our two high schools or at either of our high schools. It's actually is, you know, with our partnership with the university, half of these kiddos day, the first year, next year, standing up a freshman class will be at Max Westheimer Airport right there in in the classrooms looking out the windows seeing seeing the the airport so um you know uh repeat the question for me ryan i, I got excited about saying that and oh, i didn't say so I, I just wondered about what is the demand like in normal oh. right now to be part of this aviation academy well give me two seconds here um, as of right now we have 136 applications already we went into this thinking well maybe we could get 30 Oh, no, maybe we needed to, to get 60. And then it went to 90. Um, and now it's, it's, you know, what I just said, over 130. And it's just growing. We do have a deadline, though, April 1st uh, for, for applications coming in. But the demand is there. We've had two parent nights. And oh, my goodness, the turnout for, for those two nights in, in Norman were incredible. You know, 100 to 200 different families coming each night um, to, to hear about it. And, and Although we had great speakers, you know, Jim Brinstein, you know, Jeff, I just went blank and he's going to kill me on this. Jeff, um, Camp. Jeff yeah. Camp, Jeff Camp came in and spoke. But the best part of it was when they stayed after, after it was over, the questions, the parents and the kids were asking about what does this look like? What am I going to be able to do? And just that pure excitement. And, you know, Mike Anderson mentioned that they're starting, you know, a a is for um, airplane and airport and all those things. He mentioned that to me when we were down there visiting. But we're also starting next year in ninth grade, and we're work working both directions. Although we'll have classes in ninth grade, we're going to start bringing in um, you know, speakers and, and programmatic pieces going the other direction. So really exciting things. So we, we hope in the next few years that we are serving six to 700 high school kids and 16,000 Norman Public Schools and or Oklahoma students. Could I throw up a question from our audience? Would that be okay, Dr. Nick and Rick? Sure. Sure. Um, KT says, would like to hear more about uh, astrophysics. Would like to hear more about Oklahoma and the space program, even drone tech. Comments? Well, I'll start off real quick in this. I mean, we're – that's above my head in a, in a lot of areas, but, you know, uh, part of this program, as even Mike mentioned, you know, there's going to be the unmanned. There, there are a lot of opportunities. In Oklahoma, I learned the other night from Jeff that we have a spaceport in Oklahoma already as well, um, and kind of kind of cool stuff. But this just opens those doors, and to my point with our kiddos, uh, getting them exposed and then getting them to that next level into their passion courses faster, their passion areas faster, uh, it's just going to grow. But you know, I think the rest of that's right in uh, Rick's lane. Well, you can't have a program that's, you know, that, that's centered on aerospace and not talk about space. I mean, and particularly right now with commercial launch and everything that we're seeing every day and, you know, Artemis going back to the moon and, and beyond to Mars, obviously, uh, 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 you know, driven by SpaceX and Elon Musk's passion for that. Um, those kind of things capture imagination. They did for all of us when we were kids, and it's no different today. So that will feature in programmatically uh, with this with this program as we continue to advance kids into their junior and senior years. As it relates to drones, um, again, drones are here to stay. Uh, unmanned aerial systems, not only you know how to fly them, how to maintain them, uh, how to design and engineer new ones, how to how to put them to put them to use uh, from an economic standpoint, whether it be delivering packages or vertical takeoff and lift for one day, you know, all of us uh, in terms of how we're going to be um, moving around this new kind of uh, uh, new air, um, air, air mobile mobility, uh, air mobility that we keep hearing about and reading about. So Oklahoma plays central, you know, very, you know, we, we're, we're, we've got a lot of critical mass in this area as well. 
Um, both universities are both our flagship universities, University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State have have unmanned aerial vehicle systems, um, sensors around all of that as well. And so we'll have a great living laboratory to to get our kids immersed in kind of all things unmanned, um, which is really, really exciting. I know there's some great work uh, going on down in the Choctaw Nation uh, with drones. Let me ask yep. a, a question about the general understanding of this industry. I don't think that that policymakers, media have done a good job of really showing the extent that this is happening. We have a national treasure. In fact, I was was going to go out there a couple of weeks ago and get to see him, but I didn't. I didn't get to because of some weather. There's a guy named uh, General Stafford. A lot of yeah. Oklahomans don't know that this is a national treasure, world hero, has a, a place in Weatherford out here. I've spent some time with him, and it's like being in the presence of Yoda. Okay, this is one of Oklahoma's great treasures. We have so much history in this, and we are doing so much in the future. Are folks like me in the media and our policymakers just not doing enough to highlight this? Before and, and I shouldn't uh, say ask a question and add something additional, but you know what we haven't said is Rick was very instrumental in starting a new defense industry trade association. Some friends are involved with. It's really important. We're losing a senior United States senator who has been a boon um, to our industries in the state, and I'm not sure that that most of the media Rick has been about the replacement, but Oklahomans are going to have to you know, take a quick look at this because, you know, other states start to poach on us. It's happened before the day Robert S. Kerr died, for example. Other states come in, try to take what you have. We really need to up our understanding of this industry and become very protective, don't we, Rick? Well, a lot of things in there to, to unpack, but to start with, yes. Um, I, I think that people are starting to see it now. Uh, it's interesting, if you roll the clock back 20 years ago, when people thought about aerospace in Oklahoma City, they thought about Tinker Air Force Base um, and didn't appreciate the kind of work that was being done there to support readiness. I think it was largely marginalized as, you know, uh, either just fixing old airplanes over there, which is which is a massive oversimplification. Uh, with each background, the mission at Tinker has continued to expand. And if you roll the clock forward today, all the maintenance, repair, overhaul, modernization upgrade uh programs all the all the all the major decisions um air force wide are made at tinker the other bases that support maintenance of paranormal overhaul warner robbins and hill in ogden utah report into tinker they control any given year 14 to 18 billion dollars of federal spending all the major decisions are around all that and so all the companies that you've seen quietly spring up around here not just the Boeings and the Lockheeds and the Northrop's, which which anchor all of that and can continue to expand their presence as well, but but it's a thousand different companies, quarter corner to corner, border to border in our state, that support not only the mission at Tinker, but going down to you know Lawton at Fort Sill, Vance Air Force Base in Enid, and and Altus Air Force Base um, up the Turnpike in Tulsa. You've got American Airlines and, you know, and all the companies that support, you know, that mission up there. I mean, if you if, if you look at this just on a on a global map, there are about seven centers on the planet that are recognized as being the leading with, with you know, having uh, critical infrastructure and maintenance or repair and overhaul of aircraft. I mean, it's exciting to build them, but once you build them, they last 20 to 50 years. And so that's that's very stable as you fly. You know when they're going to be maintained. You know, we don't ride the roller coaster we do with oil and gas and aerospace. It's very stable. But we're one of the top seven global hubs for maintenance, repair, overhaul, and sustainment on the planet. And when you look at the fact that the largest commercial maintenance, repair, and overhaul center uh, in North America is in Tulsa for American Airlines, and the largest commercial or military of any kind is in Oklahoma City at Tinker, it's it's an incredible amount of of critical mass here that we which you know we, that we not only need to protect and defend fiercely, which Senator Inhofe you mentioned that him and his him and his team in D.C. his staff have done an incredible job, but we have to continue to focus on growing. Doctor Nick, if people want to get involved in your program, say other superintendents or parents want to know more about this program. Some people are going to hear about this. They're going to want to know. I want to get my kid involved to some extent. What are your suggestions? 
Well, I hope so. First of all, um, we have a, a ton of information on our, our website, you know, normanpublicschoolsorg slash um, aviation academy. Just go there. Uh, pretty much everything you need to know is there. But if you have questions, give us a call. But we'll talk to anybody and everybody about this. Really excited. And, you know, I really do have to publicly thank Rick for this, because here's the deal. This this was going to happen in Norman. This was going to happen one way or another. We know the the world we live in. Families want to do what's right for their kids and they're going to do whatever it takes. And as the leader of Norman Public Schools, my, my focus has always been we have to be the choice. We have to do everything we can to provide everything we can for kiddos. And when Rick brought this to us, um, I don't know how much excitement he had about thinking we were going to jump in like we have, but um, when he brought it to us, it was a no brainer. So, you know, yeah, like Mike and Ada or, or anywhere else, I encourage people to, to get engaged. Uh, we have strategically so that we're open called ours Oklahoma Aviation Academy. It's not the Norman Public Schools Aviation Academy, um, Oklahoma Aviation Academy. Um, you know, transfer issues are not a, uh, an, they're not an issue. If, if people are interested, they want their kids exposed, give us a holler and, and we'll work with you on that. Yeah, if I can add to that real quick, I mean, this is, uh, uh, I can't thank, you know, the leadership of Norman Public Schools. And frankly, it's been amazing as a Norman resident to see the whole the whole community rally around this idea uh, has just been has just uh, been amazing. This was originally th thought to be a charter school. That's originally kind of how I thought this might have to you know be put together. Um, and our original discussions were talking about how could we partner. And really, I just you know Nick, I applaud you and uh, the leadership of the school board. Um, I mean, everybody has just said, look, you you could do that. But I think we could get there faster and we could do it more robustly, um, you know, with better access to capital and, and human talent and all these other kind of things. If we do it under the, Norman, the umbrella of Norman Public Schools it was not the answer I thought I was going to get, but it's, it was the right answer. Um, and the, you know, and the approach to this that they've all taken has moved the timeline forward literally two years. Our thought maybe is our first class was optimistically fall 2023, more likely fall 2024. But to be able to get this thing going now in the fall of 2022, I mean, at the numbers that we're talking about, you're talking about 200, maybe 300 more students ahead of the curve versus what we'd have had to do if we'd waited to pull it off the other way with all the uncertainty that comes with trying to do, launching a new, a new program from scratch. So to be able to partner in this way, to have the community support that we've had, uh, it's just been extraordinary. I mean, it's it's lined up better than I ever imagined. Well, I appreciate that, Rick, and I'm sorry. Uh, you and I can ping pong back and forth, and Ryan and Scott can listen. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, to your point of the community, I, I know our Chamber of Commerce is going to D.C. this next week, and they're all wearing Oklahoma Aviation Academy hats. You know, I'll, I'll selfishly put we have a logo on this side, um, you know, for it. Um, all of our legislators have jumped in. I haven't had to call them. They've called us. Um, uh, which it never happens. So it's, uh, it's, it's an incredible opportunity to Rick's point, the community, the school board, um, uh, Boeing, all the industry partners um, are just reaching out. And, and we haven't said it, but uh, Grayson, what a, what a gem, what a, what a go-getter and, and really appreciate he and, and Paula and their work and supporting us because we'll be using that same curriculum uh, for sure starting our program. You know, I watched... Um... I think I first met Rick Nagel a long time ago. Okay. And so I've watched his career from afar and as a sooner, you know, I was really, it was really great to see the, the governor place Rick on the board of regents at the university of Oklahoma. And I'm watching what the president is doing down there. I mean, what a great job is happening at, at my university. And so Rick, I'm wondering what else you got up your sleeve? I mean, this is so great to see the things that you're talking about and, and to find leadership that really is making us focus on the paths forward we need to be going. And as you mentioned, we've got so many places where our outcomes, like in health, are just in, you know at, at the bottom. When you see these things that are happening in our state, what other things do you think we need to be doing? The policymakers need to be following people like you, business leaders, in getting into, or that we're missing out on. Well, I think the big opportunity not only for the University of Oklahoma, but for all of our colleges across the state, it's just to get a lot more aligned with the private sector. Um, you know, you talk, you know, and, and that 
that covers every you know every sector, right? You meant we're talking about aerospace here today. You just mentioned healthcare. Uh, we're also a state that's got some of the worst health outcomes in the country. A big opportunity that drove the merger of the hospital trust and and OU Health and the privatization of all that uh, that we that we you know approved earlier uh, late last year. Um, more to be more to be done there for sure. But we're starting to get the right, I think, chess pieces on the board to think about, you know, how do we really move the needle dramatically and, you know, in line with Governor Stitt, make this a, a top 10 state across the board. You know, we're just unfortunately so fragmented politically. I've also seen I think we've got great leadership at the Capitol right now. They recognize that you can't when, you, when you're a small state, you've got scarce resources. You have to be smart about how to deploy those resources. Um, and what we've tended to do is is unfortunately not fight the natural temptation to spread it all out and make everybody happy. So you kind of being mediocre at kind of everything. If we can begin to start coalescing our resources and decide we're going to be great at a few things, more will follow. And and so what I see right now is that the mission of OU is really trying to get aligned with the private sector, um, do a lot more in 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 areas of our um, educational pursuits that align with critical mass areas of our economy, like aerospace and defense, didn't get a lot of press. But the legislature in the last session, um, cr you know, created a funding stream. The governor approved it for the Oklahoma Aerospace and Defense Institute, um, powered by the University of Oklahoma, with the aim of going out and developing kind of a national lab concept of going out and getting a lot more federal research tied in with our state's largest industrial sector. Former commanding general at Tinker Air Force Base, Gene Kirkland, heads that up. It's our first executive director. And we're, we're you know, hopefully we're going to be announcing some pretty exciting anchor contracts with that here pretty soon. And so it's things like that um, that are pretty exciting. And also through partnership. Uh, the University of Oklahoma, you know, can't do everything. And Oklahoma State can't do everything. Uh, nor can, you know, Southwestern or Southeastern. Opportunities for us to partner and leverage core competencies in a way where we're not competing, it, it, but, but, but really concentrating an effort so that one of us can be great at something will require some discipline, but at the end of the day, I think will help our state move the needle. I'm really excited, for example, the University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are partnering on the hydrogen opportunity that's moving through Congress right now. Um, that'll benefit all the states. So instead of Oklahoma competing with OSU, we're coming together as a state and recognizes our, recognizing our competition is really Texas, it's Arkansas, it's Colorado, and it's Kansas. We've got to win our region. And when we start winning our region, you know, we can start, you know, dominating our, our national landscape as well. So to me, it's, it's putting these pieces in place that fundamentally build towards that kind of a outcome. You just gave me my show notes for the next two or three hot seats. So I'm looking forward to that. By the way, and this is a shout out because, well, I've got all y'all on here to Ryan Welton. We just did a stream about a week ago, Ryan, with, uh, with Secretary Wagner and two officials, one from Arkansas, one from Louisiana. He's working with to, to do one of these DOE hubs uh, in Oklahoma with hydrogen. I've not mm -hmm. seen that conversation anyplace else. And so what I was going to say, the reason I brought Ryan Welton up was because when on these platforms that Griffin Communications we have, we can get into those long form conversations, take those deep dives on these issues that you seldom see or read anywhere because, because of these platforms. And so, yeah. And if, and if I may, um, you're a pioneer in this, you know, we met during your days in, in radio and we got together and decided how can we have these long form conversations for folks who want to watch this or watch the conversation you had with secretary Wagner about hydrogen. Just remember right after this, we're clipping it and putting it on the news nine and news on six websites our news apps, and if you don't have our streaming apps for Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire Stick, you'll be able to watch it on the big screen over and over, um, and they'll be there on demand. These are conversations that can be looked at over the course of the next several weeks and months. We call them nerd dives. Right. But, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, if you look at a Wall Street Journal story or New York Times story or a, or a Fortune magazine, they're pretty long. They're involved, and you cannot really do and understand these topics in a, with a, a real short read. And so I'm very grateful to David Griffin, Ryan Wal uh, Welton, all the folks up there to make these platforms available. I want to thank uh, Dr. Nick and whose name we hit right every time. But as long as we say Dr. Nick, we, we can do 100%. It's a great program down at, the, at uh, Norman. Best of luck. I'm watching what happens down there at my university. By the way, the Regents did a really good job on that head football coach. 
Okay. Yeah, that was a pretty good deal. And which by the way, I mean, we have I mean the great one of the greatest coaches of all time is down there coaching women's softball. I mean, historical figure. And and OSU, where my youngest one is, is doing they're doing great things up there too. So, you know, I'm learning to be one of those house divided. Rick Nagel, who is the CEO of Acorn Growth Company, is doing a great, great job for our state and the, a region at the University of Oklahoma. And Dr. Rick Miliarino, the superintendent of Norman High School. Is that is that good? Did I get that right? You, well, except you called me Rick this time, so you just messed up your, your trend. But that's all right. It's Nick. No, Rick and Nick. It looks pretty good on the screen here, though. So. like it. Well, I got the Dr. Nick stuff right. But listen, I'm very yeah. old, so I don't know where my car keys are. So I'm, if we hit it, that's... And if, I, that's if I'm next to, the, next to this guy anytime and you call me Rick, I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. So, Thanks to you both. And uh, best of luck in the continued athletic endeavors this weekend to you both. All right. Thank, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Ryan. Yes. Thank thanks, you. Take care, guys. See you. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Dr. Nick. Thanks for being with us. Okay. Listen, I loved that, this conversation today. Yeah, this is a uh, very exciting and it does make you sort of yearn to go back and be a, a student again. The opportunities that we had back in the day are not the opportunities the students have now. And it's exciting to see that kids are are grabbing these by the horns. Yeah, I just wasn't able to identify with uh, Rick when he was going. You remember when you were in calculus and trigonometry? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> that's why I didn't so, go to the engineering school at OU. I, I will tell you, so uh, I remember taking trigonometry, but I also remember I was a journalism student at OU. You see the UCLA back here. I'm a boomer sooner, uh, graduated from the Herbert School of Journalism, and then I went and tried to go get my MBA, and I took a class called uh, uh, Quantitative Methods, and it involved calculus, and I was like, see ya. That was not my jam at all. It's uh, Journalists and math don't necessarily uh, coalesce. Well, it's great conversations this morning. I want to thank uh, Ryan and I want to thank all of our guests uh, for uh, this aerospace topic. You know what this is? This cuts across uh, partisan levels. It cuts across. I mean, we have education debates in Oklahoma. A conversation like today unites all aspects of the education establishment because who can argue against this? And then the really aspect of having JD on from Ada it's just bona fides about how these programs work. I mean, this young man's going to go out and in high school, he's acquired skills, STEM skills that are going to apply to whatever he wants to do down the road. Right. hundred percent. And of course we couldn't do it. We, we see the logo right above my head there. Every kid counts Oklahoma. Uh, you can find them at every kid counts. Okay. I believe that's on Facebook. I don't know if their Twitter handle is exactly that, but uh, every kid counts Oklahoma, check them out. It is. It's at Echo Oklahoma, E C K O K L A H O M A. So, you got it. thanks so very much. All right, to Ryan Welton, all the folks uh, back at Griffin Communications, make this possible. And I'm Scott Mitchell. We will see you tomorrow morning on Your Vote Counts. It's the A Team, Mr. Uh, Dunnington, and Leader John Eccles will be there tomorrow morning. And Monday night, News Watch Oklahoma. 7 o'clock. In the meantime, get out, enjoy this weather, and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.